All right, here we go with some more Black Red Eldrazi. Now, I understand this hand, what this hand is. It is six lands, and there is there is really no world in which you would typically keep this. However, it has a turn two play of Thought Not Seer, and then has a bunch of Muta Vaults to back it up, so I feel like it's like kind of okay. Now, obviously, if we were to get Thought Seeds there, like, you know, our hopes and dreams would all die, but... That's not what happened, so let's just play a turn two Thought Knots here. I mean, this is just such a good play. It'd be even more insane if we were on the play, but... I mean, maybe you want to be on the draw with this hand. I don't know. Either way, I'm not disappointed with this. I mean, this is turn two. We have a Thought Knots here. Turn three, we have Hanger Back plus Inquisition. Ooh. Uh-oh. Oh, this is real bad. <laughs> oh no. And right, we're taking we're taking Ah oh, you can play the freaking bridge next turn though. Like I wanna exile the bridge and then Oh jeez. I wanna exile bridge and then hope he lets us Inquisition the next bridge since he didn't play the turn before. But now that we have a creature he's more likely to just exile spirit guide, play ritual, play bridge. So taking the first bridge doesn't do anything. And we're better off taking the ritual to try to keep him from ever casting bridges. But that's so bad. Oh my gosh. At least Chalice of the Void isn't insane against us. It's like merely okay. Uh, uh, we have Colgon's Command. We're going to get Blood Moon to the Magus of the Moon. Everything's bad. I'm taking the bridge. Um, we have Colgon's command, so if the game goes forever, we can reach a point where we can kill a bridge. So there is value in taking the first one, even if he does just turbo out a second one right here. And keeps us from attacking for a long time. This game might be a grind. Looks like he's going for it. Yep, there goes the spirit guy, there's the ritual, here comes the bridge. Good news is we're not getting blood mooned here. Actually he's going to have four cards in his hand too, we even get an attack in. This is not going to be unwinnable. He's actually, I guess, probably debating right here if he wants the Magus of the Moon or the... Yep. Oh. <sighs> All right, then. And this is going to be a grind. He blew his load on a Magus of the Moon instead of a Ensnaring Bridge. Which is theoretically going to be okay. Our hand is decent against it. And we have like non-zero amounts of outs here. We can hit um, our two swamps or our slaughter pact. I like that one. Uh, slaughter pact did Inquisition him. I like it. Yeah, I think we slaughter pact Inquisition take the bridge. This might have been wrong. Maybe we're... Okay, guess it worked. <laughs> um, I was going to say... Like, the plus side of this play is we get a slaughter pact it, then Inquisition him, and take the other bridge so we can get through the bridge. The downside is if we slaughter pact that, and then he, through some combination of cards in his hand, uh, just plays another Blood Moon effect, and then we can't pay for our pact and lose. Uh, luckily, that did not happen. That was, that was weird. Oh, we were going to get there anyways. And then we are going to strangler that. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Shatterstorm, Ratchet Bomb. Magma Spray, probably for the Magus of the Moon. 
Um, brutality. Thoughtsy seems good. Kalidus, super unnecessary. Dreadbore. I guess we'll keep the... Actually, yeah, I guess we'll keep the Dreadbores probably over in the Terminates, to be honest, um, because we can Dreadbore, you know, Koth or uh, Chandra or whatever he plays here. Um, Strangler only hits Magus of the Moon. And if he has Magus of the Moon, um, then we're probably, like, you know, what good Strangler... Because we probably can't cast it. And if we can cast it, then we don't care about Magus anyways. We'll go to the second one here. Hangerbacks are are sort of decent, given that there's something we can cast. And if we have to Shatter Storm, and we get something out of them. So we need to cut one more here. Do I cut the other? I I'm going to cut the other Terminate. It feels a little odd. I, we'll keep one Strangler, I guess. Because it at least beats. We sort of, there's, you know, there's several different ways we could have gone with the sideboarding here, but I don't think we need all that creature removal because we have a lot of ways to deal with Magus of the Moon, or we can just beat Magus of the Moon. This hand seems pretty solid. Thoughts he's into Brutality. On our opponent's mold of five already. Seems good. Seems good. He's playing all in red. I don't understand why this deck isn't called all in red. That's what I'm. That's that's my thing. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is basically, it's just like, mono red hate whatever. Oh, I think I'll take this bridge. This isn't gonna do anything yet. In center sorcery. I'll take the bridge. Um. It's called, like, free win red. Basically, the idea is you get free wins with a bridge or blood moon or whatever. And that's a fine name, I guess. But back in the day, Old Extended, there was all in red where it would play basically all the rituals. And this is when Seething, Thong and Seizing, Seething Song and Ride of Flame were legal. So the dream was to go, like, turn one, uh, Seething Song, or turn one, Ride of Flame, Ritual, Seething Song, have five mana, uh, cast Deus of Calamity, which is a 6-6 six, six for 5 red or green hybrid. That one deals combat damage, at least 6 combat damage to a player, destroy one of their lands. So the idea is if you just play that on turn 1 and they don't have Path to Exile, they never get to have lands. Or you could hit, like, if you had another ritual, you could have 6 mana, hit Chandra of Flame, I believe is... Yeah, the 6... Chandra of Blaze, the 6 mana one. Um, and then it does this, like, wheel thing where each player discards their card, hand and draws 4 cards. And they usually just basically wreck them at the beginning, and you have a Planeswalker. It was all in all pretty sweet, actually. All right, so we'll get our Muta Vault in there. I guess I'm just going to play the Relic. He didn't show us, like, he has nothing to hit with Brutality. I'd rather save Brutality... To maybe kill something later? I don't really know. Now he's drawn a couple cards. I might brutality him. Oh, he's going to play his uh, Planeswalker. Excuse me. And that is why we play the Vault so we can get in at the Planeswalker. Turn 3 Koth is, is actually not bad against our deck. Too bad this is lose life. We can't use it to finish off the cough here. Well, we're definitely taking damage from this thing. I was going to say the good news is we can ghost quarter ourselves on the black mana, but we can just check his hand with this anyways. Okay, just to land. I probably could have known that if I'd written down what he had, but I don't typically do that on Magic Online. Especially when I'm recording and just be very onerous to everybody to watch. <clears throat> well, we can play Thought Dot next turn. She can just can take a bunch of oh he drew something. Chandra. It's pretty good. <sighs> We're taking a lot of damage. This is scary. 
My gosh, we're down to eight. And now we find it. <sighs> so I thought not. We make him minus to kill it. This is bad. I don't think we get anywhere by the other line is to like brutality him. Just to gain life. And then send a Mutavault in there, and we look at killing Koth next turn. And then just getting wrecked by Chandra. Chandra's a great draw for him. If he didn't draw that, I think we would have been fine. But All right, here's the line. God, he's going to get a draw card off of it, too. But we just don't have any other choice. This is so bad. Turn 3 Koth into turn 4 Chandra on the play against... Our deck's very good. I mean, we had to take the bridge, though. And he rips Blood Moon off the top, too, huh? Oh. I think we're very dead. The line of Chandra into Blood Moon off the top of the deck was pretty good. I could Ghost Quarter to get Black Mana. I guess I have to do that. I guess that a crossbow goes. No, I can't. I guess it's if we don't get a draw card this turn, but we're pretty dead here. No, we still get a draw. Okay, that doesn't matter. Yeah. The problem is we don't do anything now. Assuming he just kills our thought not. Yeah, this is real bad. I guess the good news is he tapped out before he did that, so he might actually be able to pick the card off from his hand. I don't know. I think we're just very, very dead. In fact, I think we're actually just dead next turn, even if we drain life. We'll take six more. Oh, man. We need to cast one of these cards. And one is not enough. Because if we Colagon's command to kill Chandra and make him discard, we die to Koth. If we Brutality, we die to Chandra plus Koth. So we're actually just dead. Okay. That's fine. I don't feel like we played poorly. We just got un... He got... I would say, actually, maybe he got lucky more so than we even got unlucky. I wonder if Imbringer's good here. I think it might be, actually. Might be better than this other Strangler. This is why we kept Dreadbore in, by the way. Dreadbore wasn't out to that stuff. Maybe this isn't good. Maybe we slaughter games. Play against it like it's more of a combo deck than uh than anything else. So we're we're a, a little down on ways now to kill a Magus of the Moon. But we still have plenty. Is it is the Magma Spray better than it's it's just a creature, right? So that's kind of annoying. Yeah, I think we're... Yeah, let's see. Um, the Relic doesn't do much, right? It just kind of cycles at this point. His deck doesn't really use his graveyard. Like, Relic doesn't really... He doesn't really use his graveyard. And we took out the only processors in the deck, so... <clears throat> they just cycle. May as well keep our out to Magus of the Moon. I think the Embraer might be good. It's also a way to pressure Planeswalkers, even if we're locked out of stuff I'm keeping this one <clears throat> definitely keeping this one see brutality though maybe I wasn't supposed to brutality is not actually that good against him
because it just like he doesn't have many instants or sorceries that said I'm definitely going to run it out here we may get a ritual or something <laughs> okay he's throwing away lands oh what a good draw <laughs> what a good draw I'm going to save it that's what I'm going to do And I'm going to Brutality him right now. Probably without discarding. Probably just to look at his hand. Let's see what we're looking at. I love this card. This card's so good. Make control great again in, great again in Modern. And the Aether Revolt card. A four mana minus three minus three tall creatures and you can cast a card with converted mana cost three or less from your hand for free. I don't know if broken's the right word because you know minus three minus threes aren't actually even that good in modern. But whew, that card is sweet. Well, we get one card here. And we know what we're up against. And what we're up against is super beatable, so Ratchet Bomb, please. We can even Brutality one of the Mags of the Moon's down. I mean, he's got all his hate cards, but they all get wrecked by Ratchet Bomb on three. And the beauty of this is that... Because it's really the bridge that matters, because that's how we have to kill him eventually. So we can answer the Magus of the Moons without resorting to anything. Let's look at his hand. Time to get the bridge out of here. Alright, so we show him the swamp now, that's fine. <clears throat> he's down to... Well, he's got Faithless Looting he can use, but... I think hitting our land drop there is worth it. So play Magus of the Moon. Oh. He just ripped Bridge instead. That's fine. Because we have both our swamps. And this can attack. And so he's got a Magus of the Moon we can Brutality to death. Uh, and it's not even, it stops our Muta Vault right now, that's it. He's playing lands he probably shouldn't because of the Faithless Looting in his graveyard. Unless he's super worried about this Muta Vault beat down while it can still attack. Alright, hopefully this will be the looting. And then we can try to Collective Brutality him. Four mana. Oh, he found a Planeswalker. It's pretty good, too. Plus it for mana. That would be the tech play. Nope. Plus for mana, cast Faithless Looting. Yeah, we'll Dreadbore this thing. Now what he has done, I mean he's he's played a lot of hate cards, and he has this stupid bridge. I mean we're still fine. Like he blood moons here, we brutality it, or Magus of the Moons, we kill it. Um, we just start taking up our Hangerback Walker, kill him later with Ratchet Bomb. It's annoying. So we know he has Magus of the Moon in hand. Doesn't do anything. Playing our Temple doesn't do much either. I'm gonna keep it. I don't think blowing the. We just gotta settle in for this one. I don't think using the Ratchet Bomb to kill the bridge is good. 
and then getting in there for two with our Muta Vault leaves us really open to getting wrecked by another Staring Bridge. I don't know what I want to draw. Hangerback Walker was actually pretty good. Inbringer? <laughs> I'd take an Inbringer right about now. That would be great. Well, crud. Zero? Just to get out of his hand? Doesn't do much to us. Ooh, it's a good draw! No creatures get back from our graveyard, but we can make him discard his Magus of the Moon. I am happy doing this. This card's so good. Make control great again right there. Alright, let's get on in there. Okay, so now I feel pretty good. We've got the Ratchet Bomb. He's He played all those lands, and he has Faithless Looting in his graveyard. Now he just doesn't have anything. Um, this is better than a Sulphur Springs. Getting in there for two at a time is not the most winning of plans, but it works. Alright, down to 12. Now he might pull the trigger on eluding if he's got a couple blanks in hand. Yep. Yep, makes sense. We've tried a lot of land. I don't want to kill it. Maybe we're supposed to. We have so many... I don't think we do. Even if we kill it, we're just getting in for two with Immutable. I don't think it's worth it. Well, now it is, because we need to do this. Let's see what he's got. I bet it's a land. Ooh, it's a ritual. All right, now we're talking. Put him at 10. Next attack puts him to 4. Brutality kills him if we can get him to 2. Looting? I guess. Sure. We have, in fact, been waiting for this. All right, we want two modes, drain, and kill a creature, discard this land, we've been holding for a long time to do that, this puts him to eight, I actually don't know if it's worth I guess it is. Maybe. I'm trying to figure out if it's worth it playing a second thought, not seer. He has no cards in hand, so it's not doing anything. Um, and we have lethal with him at two. Next turn, through everything but a Magus of the Moon. If he played Magus of the Moon, it would not be lethal. So the question is, is there any sort of wrath he could play that would kill both thought, not seers and punish us for playing it? I don't think so. Blasphemous Act is the only one I can think of. And it would cost 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it costs like 13 mana, so it wouldn't even work. I think we just play it. This way he's dead through Magus of the Moon. Although I don't know if that's particularly relevant. Because Magus of the Moon would just buy him a turn anyway. So I think we're I think this should do it though. We have fought through it. He definitely stole game two from us with a very nice draw. Those are a lot of very good hate cards and planeswalkers that he played. But I think we're gonna get there this time. Dreadbore was great. Colagon's command, as expected, is insane against uh, that deck. And uh Eldrazi or Eldrazi. So Mutavault pulled its load this game. You know, we have this over the displacer basically, is sort of what I determined, but 
it did some work there, whereas this placer, I don't know what it would have done, but it would have died in anger of the gods. But Mewvault was great, so good game.